Hey there, happy artists, and welcome back to Kyle Heath Art. In this month's video, I'm going to show you how to create an email marketing list. Now, if you've already seen my art marketing masterclass, um, you'll know that I referenced creating an email list there as a good thing to do. So if you haven't seen the art marketing um, video, that's fine. You don't need to start with that one, but um, if you are interested in learning how to gain visibility as an artist um, to expand your audience, then that that video is going to be really similar to this one in a sense that it's going to be kind of uh, marketing focused. Now, <laughs> I said this in that video too, if the word marketing is really intimidating to you, um, I guess I just want to tell you that I understand that and I'm going to do my best in every single marketing video I create to, um, to try to make the subject not um, easy, easy to digest, um, not scary. I'm going to move slowly through everything I talk about and um, I'm going to encourage you over and over again that um, any bit of marketing that you decide, decide to do is a positive thing and it's going to help your um, help you gain visibility but there's always more marketing to do than anyone will be able to do there's always more marketing knowledge that um, that you're not going to have so I don't know I just want to get the point across that I know marketing is kind of a scary thing a lot of us artists would rather sit in our studios and create artwork and never have to think about marketing at all but um but I hope I can express to you that marketing really isn't that bad and honestly it's kind of fun when you get into it because when when you get to the heart of what marketing is it's uh it's being social it's connecting with people it's finding people out there who are fans of your work who resonate with what you do who love you and so when you do marketing, you're reaching out to your buddies. You know, you're not you're not pressuring people. You're not being annoying. You're not cold calling. You're um you're just reaching out to your buddies who love you, respect you, and want to hear more about what you do. So I'll talk more about that as as I walk you through how to create your first email marketing list. Um, but I think it's really important to start with that because I know how scary marketing is. So why build an email marketing list? I talked about this in the Art Marketing Masterclass, but um, you'll notice that most of my art marketing video was about Instagram and Facebook and about how you can gain visibility on social media. And I stand behind that. Social media it's an awesome way to, to get people to follow you, um, to make sales for your paintings, to, um, to gain exposure for your art classes that you want to teach, you know, all that stuff. Social media is incredible, um, and it's, it's one, of the, uh, one of the main areas that I target to, to gain more visibility as an artist. So why worry about email marketing? Well, email marketing, I think, is a critical and wonderful way to um, to expand your following and to reach out to your people. The, the way that it's different from social media is, number one, um, it's a little bit harder to get someone to give you their email address. You know, I certainly don't sign up for, for every email list anymore. Like, I only want to follow the things I really want to follow. So me giving out my email address is a pretty big deal. And what that would mean for you is, is think about this. If, if you grow an email list, it's going to be the same for you. The people that sign up to your list are the people who are most interested in your stuff. So in marketing speak, you'd call that they're a very engaged audience. They're the people who really want to see your stuff, and they're the people who are most likely to respond to your stuff. So creating an email list is a really natural way to find and speak to 
your your most rabid fans, the most ravenous fans of your art. Um, and what that means for email marketing is, in a lot of ways, you get better responses from emails than you do any other way that you could reach out to your fans. Um, in terms of like people clicking, in terms of people reading the stuff that, um, that you're sending out, in terms of responding to sales that you might have or announcements of new collections, people on an email list respond way, way more than people on like your social media accounts, people who follow you on Instagram. And we've all experienced that, right? Think about your own Instagram account if you've got one. Say you've got, um, I don't know, 500 followers on your on your art Instagram account. <laughs> you know that like for most of the pictures that you post, you probably don't get 500 likes from that, you know? <laughs> At least, at least I don't. I get a very small percentage of likes of engagement from an Instagram post. You know, I think at the time of this recording, I've got like, I don't know, 1,500 Instagram followers or something like that. And, um, you know, I feel really good if I get over 300 likes on a post. Um, you know, that tells me that it was like really, really engaging. So think about that. What is that? That's 20 percent of my followers have responded to an Instagram post um, you know 20 percent is pretty easy to get for an email list that's really engaged so anyways I don't want to ramble on too much about like trying to sell you on an email list or or all that but I thought it would be you know kind of valuable to talk for a minute about why marketing is a good thing to do and why an email list is a good thing to have before we get into you know the really practical stuff which is going to be most of this video but before before i get into the practical stuff there's one more thing i need to say and that's um the other the other good reason to have an email list is um it's yours nobody's going to take it away from you so say you've got a huge instagram account with you know a hundred thousand followers and you know they're engaged with you you're selling artwork and and stuff and then think about okay one day Instagram decides to change their algorithm and all of a sudden every post you make goes to nobody you're suddenly getting 10% of what you used to get um, maybe Instagram stops allowing you to have links so people can't go off Instagram to see your stuff anymore you know, I don't know if that's ever going to happen, but it's happened with social media in the past. You know, think about, um, I don't know, MySpace. <laughs> it's possible that Instagram and Facebook will go the way of MySpace one day and you'll lose your hard-earned audience. Having an email list, you're never going to have to worry about that. That's your audience. You own them and you can reach out to them and nobody's going to take that away from you. So having an email list is also kind of a nice evergreen sort of thing. You know, you know it's something that you're going to be able to rely on 20 years from now, you know, assuming people still use email 20 years from now. I think they probably will though. So anyways, that's that's all the high level stuff of me trying to convince you to uh to start an email list if you don't already have one. Now the rest of this video, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna walk you step by step through how to set up your email list, how to um, create an audience, how to add contacts to your list, how to send emails, um, and a little bit about how to get people to start signing up for your email list. So that's the map of what this video is gonna be. Um, and I'm gonna take it slowly, I'm gonna walk you through step by step and try to make this really, really easy to follow. So with that, let's dive into to how to make your email list. The email program that I use for my own email list is MailChimp. Um, there's a lot of different email services out there, um, and you know a lot of them are great. What I like about MailChimp is, um, number one, it's pretty. I think the emails that you send out are, are beautiful and nice. 
Um, number two, MailChimp is pretty simple and intuitive. I find it easy to understand, easy to make emails, easy to manage everything. And that's a huge plus for me. It's something that's simple that I don't have to think about too much. And uh, MailChimp also has a good pricing program. Um, starting off with MailChimp is absolutely free. So you can do this with me and um, it's not going to cost you anything. Um, up until your first 2,000 subscribers, MailChimp is free. And um, the, uh, the free program is a little bit restricted, but um, you're probably not going to notice the restrictions, especially with you know all the basics that we're doing here. Um, you're going to be able to do like a lot of really big stuff with MailChimp. And um, once you get to 2,000 subscribers, then you know you'll be ready for you know maybe some more advanced stuff. But, uh, but simple is good, right? <laughs> Especially when we're talking about marketing. Simple is good. So let's walk through, for starters, um, signing up for MailChimp and creating your email list. So I'm going to click Sign Up Free here. All right, and then we have this little sign up form. So I'm going to add an email list that I, that I have. I think I have like six email lists lying around over the years. So that'll be a good placeholder. And then let's see, for password, yeah, let's let Safari do the password for me. Um, I'm going to click that I don't want to receive emails and then sign up. So to, to slow it down, I put in my email address. Um, you need to create a username for your MailChimp account. And um, I just I don't know, I just chose a bit of this, but your username might be your first and last name. Um, and then for password, uh, choose a good strong password. You know, security is just gonna become more important, more and more important these days. It's so easy to get hacked. So anything you can do to, to make your passwords a little bit tricky for people to guess, um, I think is a good thing for security. And uh, with Safari, they'll, uh, They'll suggest a password for you and remember it, auto put it in. So I don't know. I like that about Safari. So we're going to sign up. And now it's telling me to check my email. So they've sent an activation link to my email address that I put in there. So that's what you're going to want to do now is go into your email program. I use Gmail, but whatever you got, and go in there and um, look for your sign up email. Now it might take a little bit for it to come in and um, it's also possible that it'll end up in your spam folder. I'm just gonna check that real quick. So if you've got Gmail, your spam folder is hidden down here. Oh, <laughs> sure enough, look at that. It got sent into my spam folder. So um, yeah, it's possible that yours will do that too. Gmail's pretty good at trying to weed out bad stuff, but sometimes they, you know, put the good stuff in your spam folder too. So I'm checking my spam folder. What I did, if you've got Gmail, is they've got this uh, more, less tab down here. So I've scrolled down to that more tab, clicked it, and now you go down till you see spam. I clicked spam, and now I see this MailChimp email. So this is my activation email. So the email says, we're glad you're here, activate your account. So I'm going to click that. And voila, we go to this really yellow MailChimp screen. It's asking you if you're a robot or not. Let's see, am I? Nope, not a robot. So I'll click that. And here we go. Here they show you all the different plans you can do. We want the free one, which is what they've automatically got selected for you. So you click complete. And the, see here it says free plan at 2,000 contacts. So we can add 2,000 different email addresses to our list before, uh, before we have to start paying for MailChimp. Now we've got another setup screen. So put in your first and last name. Put in your business name. Um, Kyle Test Art. That's good. For a website, that's optional. Um, for this whole video, 
it is not required that you have a website. I'm going to, every single thing I show you here, including how to get people to sign up for your list, does not require a website. Eventually, I'm going to post a video walking you through how to make a website too. But here, I'm going to assume that everyone doesn't have one. Uh, I'm going to leave these blank. We'll choose continue. And now you've got to put in your address. This is like a uh, kind of a spam prevention thing. Um, it's, uh, it's required to, to have an address on file to make sure that you're not, you know, illegally uh, sending emails to people that they haven't signed up for. So this is one of the ways that they kind of do the security for that. So I've got my address in here. Click continue. Do you have any contacts? Now here, if you've previously had an email list before, um, this is an area where you can automatically add emails to your list. So say you had like a different email program, uh, MailChimp can um, import your contacts. But I'm going to be starting from scratch. So I'll say no. Click continue. It's going to ask me, what do I offer? And I'm going to say I offer physical goods, paintings. And then let's see. We'll say original content. That's, I guess that's the education stuff that I do. And I think the reason they're asking this is they'll, uh, they'll suggest to you different things you can do with your email account to, uh, to reach out to new people. So that's great, I'll do that. Click continue. Another question, which of these is your primary offering? So they're trying to get at what my main thing is here. Let's say that my main goal is to sell my artwork. So I'll say physical goods. Continue. Where can people access your offerings? So they're trying to get a good general idea of what you're trying to do because they want to they wanna help you out with, with your marketing. Um, so let's see, where can people get your stuff? Um, I'm going to assume that I don't have a website either. So let's just choose skip here. And let's go. And voila, we've got our MailChimp account. And look at this, they're already helping me to, to get going with this. Um, they're saying that I can create my first email and that's something we'll do in this video. You've also got um, the next step, which would be adding your contacts and then start sending your email. So they have a nice little roadmap for, um, for basically what, uh, what we're going to be doing for this video. So, um, yeah, I was going to show you how to add some emails in first, but um, I guess since MailChimp is giving us this roadmap, let's just follow the roadmap because um, I, think, I think that's going to work great. So from here, we'll go into creating our first email. Don't worry about who you're going to send the email to yet. That's something that we'll get into after this. But uh, yeah, let's go to design an email. Here, MailChimp has a list of different templates that you can use. So what a template is, is like kind of the, the shape of what your email is going to be. And then there's going to be a lot of dragging and dropping. If you want to put photos in, um, you'll replace the text that's in there with your own text, all that stuff. So uh, let's go ahead and um, let's do the first, the first option here, showcase your products. We'll work with that. You can, uh, you can look around and see if there's a, a design that appeals to you more. But, um, but yeah, we'll, we'll just start with something really basic and, uh, and then I'll kind of show you the gist of everything. All right, so we got this little uh, beta pop-up. Let's not worry about that right now. We're gonna take the, uh, the normal route. So here is our email screen. Um, so this is like kind of a skeleton of what your email is going to look like. So you see we've got headers, we've got places for images, text, we've got a button, we've got more images, and all this stuff is customizable. If I, uh, if I don't want these images here, 
you see I can scroll over every single part of this email and there's a little trash bin up in the top right corner. It says delete block. So I can get rid of stuff if I don't want it. I can also move things. So you'll see if I scroll over here, there's this uh, little arrow guy. And if I drag that up, you'll see that now this is moved up and the buttons move down below. I can drag it back and now it's back to normal. So this is how you move stuff around. Again, I can take this text area, drag it up, and now it's above the picture. Drag it down, and uh, there we go. And it's below the picture. If you want to edit something on here, then um, you can either click on the box, or you've got this little pencil right here, and that's how you, you edit it. When you click something, you'll see you get this big area here on the side, and that's where you can uh, change the text, all that. And this button here is just a duplicate. So if you want to create you know, another picture, you can duplicate the picture, and then you've got a second one. And then if I delete it, it's going to ask me first if I'm sure I want to delete it. Yep, I do. Now that second picture is gone. All right, so I'll walk you through all of this stuff too. Um, but first off, let's uh, let's go through some of these um, these custom areas, and uh, we'll just go ahead and put some stuff in. So first off, you'll see they've got a logo area here. Um, I think I do have a logo for Kyle Heath Art. So let's see if I can find that. That's probably something I should have thought of before I started this video, but we'll figure it out. So I've clicked this, and take note, this is an image. So this would be like a JPEG picture or uh, you know, PDF or something like that. So I've clicked here for the logo, and then I'm going to choose Replace. The reason I'm choosing Replace is I'm replacing this gray picture that says logo with my own picture. So click that and then it's going to bring me to this add files screen eventually you're going to have all your pictures here so if you ever need to go to a past picture that you used in an email it'll automatically be here in a list but right now we got nothing so we're going to choose upload so we're going to upload our logo to the mailchimp email and now <laughs> let's see if i can find it <laughs> All right, let's see if I titled it Kyle Heath Art or something like that. Mm -hmm -hmm. No, you know what I should do? I'll search logo. If I was really smart, then I titled <laughs> my email logo. Here's hoping, right? So I'm scrolling through now, I'm trying to look for an image that says logo. If you're more organized than me, then you'll have it ready to go. Let's see here. Oh, also, I'll search by date modified. Click that so you can take a look here. Um, so right now, this is sorting by, I don't know what it's sorting by, but I can change this to sort by date modified. And now I'm really going back in the past. So if I have a basic idea of about when I made my logo, then um, that can make it a little bit easier to, uh, to find what you're looking for. So let's see what we've got here. Yeah, I might go ahead and cut some of this too <laughs> and just find my logo. <laughs> Keep going with the video. Yeah, might need to do that. Oh, you know what I can do actually? Here, I'm gonna cancel out of that real quick. I've got a, um, uh, an email that I created myself that I was going to show you um, to walk through a couple things. So if I go in here, <laughs> I've got my logo. So um, hopefully, yes, okay. So I'm going to save my logo here. That way I've got it for easy access. I'll go ahead and save some of these too, just so I've got some images that I can use for my email. So just so you can get like a quick look, this is... um. This is a personalized email that I, I used to template and I just dragged and dropped my stuff into it. 
and you'll see it looks like a you know a beautiful normal email so that's the end goal and uh, I'll walk you through uh, what I was thinking with this email too um, a little bit later alrighty so here we go we're back to our add a file screen to show you how to get there again I'm looking at my my email template right now it's just all placeholders I've clicked logo and then this area popped up on the right I'm choosing replace to replace my image and then clicking upload now my download section has my logo Kyle Heath art so I've chosen that click choose and there we go I've got a logo now we're already getting customized so now here moving down you'll see that I've got headers I've got images subheaders text copy the works and I think now would be a good time to talk about how to structure your email and specifically what you want to say now every single email that you send is going to be different and um, you're gonna have different goals for every email that you send but one thing that I would suggest and this is something that I mentioned in the art marketing video too is it's good to have one specific goal in mind for the email that you send out now if that's intimidating don't worry about it just just send an email that you feel comfortable with but in terms of getting people to really like latch on to what you're saying and respond to what you're asking them to do it's good to speak simply to speak clearly and to have one thing that you're really trying to get them to do with an email so let's think about some of the things that you might want to do in an email um, you might want to alert your collectors to a new collection that you've come out with so you've got a beautiful new series of 12 paintings for sale and uh, you want people to see them then um, you know the point of your email the goal might be um, check out my new collection um, if you'd like to purchase these here's how you can do it you know just a really simple direct communication whoever receives that email knows exactly what they're gonna get and they can decide if they want to open that email or not that's great that's what you want to go for another thing you could do is um, a goal for your email might be to uh, offer a sale on some of your works so the point of your email might be for the next week um, save 10% on every single one of my paintings and here's how you buy simple and direct uh, you could announce a new um, a new teaching series that you want people to sign up for you could announce that um, you're heading off to North Carolina to teach a workshop at so-and-so art gallery and if they want to sign up for your workshop then they can go here so you see there's there's all kinds of different you know things that you might communicate to your audience picking one is um is a powerful way to communicate clearly and clear communication really goes a long way doesn't it <laughs> in life in emails <laughs> in marriage <whew. laughs> clear communication alrighty so let's decide what we want to communicate with this email how about we um, we announce a sale of some of my paintings for this email so I'm gonna offer people 10% off of my paintings for the next week that seems like a you know a good thing to do around a time to uh, pick up some additional sales people are excited by sales so you might pick up more people opening this email than than have opened previous ones so yeah a good little sale is, is something nice to run every once in a while so I'm gonna go to this header click it here I think it might be asking me to uh, there we go yeah there's some message on the side but yeah so now if I click here it'll open up this text area where I can change the text so we'll say how about 
save 10% on, let's see, how do I want to communicate this? Save 10% on my latest artworks. Okay, so the reason I was thinking a little bit about that is for me, it'd be kind of natural to write something like, um, I'm offering a 10% sale or something like that. The reason why I save 10% is a stronger statement is because number one, you're, um, you're asking your reader to do something and you're making it about them. So this email isn't, um, hey, I've done this. It's, hey, this offer is here for you. You can do this. Seems like kind of a simple thing, but um, that's just another good communication technique. Make your email about your customer. So if I were writing another email, let's say I was advertising a workshop, I wouldn't want to say, um, I have a workshop in, um, Kalamazoo next month. I would want to communicate something like um, improve your brushwork this month at my next workshop. You see how that's kind of different? I'm making it about them. So when I'm offering like to improve your artwork to get better at oil painting, what I'm doing is I'm reaching out to the reader's desires, their needs, their hopes. I'm making it about them and not about me. So yeah, I didn't expect to go too deeply into, into that kind of stuff, but I think it's an important thing to, to consider. Make the email about them as much as you can. All right, so I've got this header here. And um, you know, while we're in this text area, let's take a look at some of the other stuff that, that you can do. You'll see up here, that um, MailChimp has all kinds of different ways to customize your text. So if I wanted to select this, I can basically do everything with this that I could do with uh, like Microsoft Word or something like that. You know, you got this U, I can underline my text. Um, I can make it bolder. I can italicize. Um, I have the options to change the fonts make it bigger or smaller, to change the color. I can center it or set it off to the left. You know, pretty much all the stuff that, um, that you could do with, uh, with Microsoft Word. But I'm gonna keep my email pretty simple. I like black and white because it's readable. All right, so I've saved that here. And now we've got a, uh, a photo placeholder here. Um, and so, this might be a good area to um, to showcase some of the uh, some of the paintings that you have available. Um, so let's do that. I'm gonna I'm gonna pick like a beautiful piece of artwork that I've created recently as like kind of a a way to to showcase an example of the artwork that my reader can save ten percent on. So let's go to replace. And then you'll see here, I've, I've got this picture here now, the, uh, the logo that I've imported. So all the pictures that I put in, I'm gonna be able to get them without uploading in the future. So I'll choose upload and uh, let's see, let's go to uh, some kind of painting that I made recently. I like this Peaches painting, so we'll showcase that. So we're gonna import a painting of some Peaches And there we go, boom, look at that. We've got this big, beautiful image of uh, Peaches painting for, um, for people to kind of see this is the kind of art that you can save 10% on. Um, you'll notice here that it's giving me a warning that um, my image is huge. What they mean by that is not like how big of an area it takes up, but um, the file size. So they're saying this is so many megabytes that um, people might have trouble reading your email. So I'm gonna fix that. They've got a little button here that says, let's fix it. 
And then that brings me to this area here where um, I, can, uh, I can tweak the image. Now, just by opening this up, it's changed the dimensions already. So it's made my picture smaller than it previously was. It's 12 by 12 now. It was bigger than that. So actually, you can just open this up and then click Save, and it's going to change it. So see, it was like 13 something. Boom. By opening it up and saving it, it uh, made the image smaller. So now it's a little more email friendly. If, um, if this image is personally too big for me, like in the sense of taking up this amount of space on the email, you can also do this. Click and drag your image display size, and you can make it um, however big you want to for the email. Now MailChimp is automatically going to scale this email so that it looks good either on your phone or on someone's desktop. So thankfully, you don't even need to think about that stuff. It's awesome. It's, it's just going to handle all that for you. So that's nice. All right, so I have this little example painting here of uh, you know a painting you can now save 10% on. So now let's go into this text field here. I'll click in. And now I want some kind of subheading that um, you know, continues with the theme of saving 10%. Here, I want to um, think about the customer again. So I'm going to think about what my paintings can add to my, my customer's life. You know, why would they want some of my art? So how about something like beautify your home for a great price. So you see, again, I'm making it about the customer. I'm not making it about me. I'm, um, I'm showing them what they can get <laughs> from this email offer. And now let's get some text in here. So here's where I'm going to give them the details on, um, on what I'm doing, on how they can save, all that stuff. So first, I'll, I'll greet them. Hey there, happy collectors. For this week, say 10% on all my artwork. Try not to do too many exclamation marks. I'm a pretty enthusiastic person, and <laughs> it means it's really easy for me to uh, put more exclamation marks on my emails than a, than a teen girl. <laughs> so that's kind of something I need to be careful about. Below you'll see some of my latest works. Send me an email if you are interested in one. And I will show you how to purchase. All right, so like I said previously, I'm assuming you don't have um, a website here. Obviously, if you had one, um, you, you wouldn't need to tell people how to, to purchase. You Well, you just need to say, click click any of these images below to go to the product page and make your purchase or something like that. But um, I don't, I don't want to operate on any assumptions here. So, um, you know, you may handle a purchase through PayPal or Venmo or something like that if someone reaches out to you. Um, or, you know, you may set up a free Square site or something like that. Um, however, however you handle sales, um, I want to keep this really, really open. And we'll get into email stuff in, uh, in another video. All right, so beautify your home for a great price. Howdy, folks. Save 10%. Um, look below, and you'll see some of the things you can buy. Let me know if you want something. That seems pretty, uh, pretty clear, pretty direct, not too much to read. And so now, let's put in some images of what they can purchase 
And then also what I'll do is I'll, um, I'll include the price. That way they, um, they know how much it'll cost with the 10% marked off. I'm gonna get rid of this button because I'm not trying to send people anywhere to a website or anything. So we'll trash that. And then let's see, we've got some photos here, but um, let's, let's see what other photo options we have in MailChimp. So here, if you look at what I can choose, we have a single image. That's kind of like the, the other images that we've had previously. We have an image group. So that's sounding pretty good. That's uh, a bunch of images that'll be lumped together. But let's keep going. We have an image card, and then we have an image plus text. I'm going to choose image plus text because as you'll see, when I drag this here, I've got a picture and then some text below it. So that's gonna work good for this email where I want a picture of a painting and then below it, I'll have the price. So that seems like a pretty, pretty easy, clear way to express that here's something you can buy, here's how much it costs. I like that. All right, so let's, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this, because I don't think we're gonna be using that. And now let's find another picture of a painting. Go to upload, and let's see. I've been doing a lot of peaches lately, so let's bring in another peaches painting. We're uploading, and here we go. Here's another painting. Again, it's telling me that the picture's really big, so let's fix it. Do, do, do. I'll get a sip of water while this is loading. There we go. Click save. And it automatically makes it smaller. All right, so here, this is a good place for me to put the, the price of the painting. I can also, why don't I um, put the title in there too? So this, I guess I call Dark Peaches. We'll say it's a uh, 12 by 12 inches oil on panel just to give them a little bit of info on what they're buying. We'll say originally it's a uh, whoops it's a hundred dollars, but now it's ninety dollars. All right, and the way I'll communicate this is I'll select this 100, and let me see if I've got like a strike through anywhere on here. I actually don't know if we do or not. Okay, so I was gonna cross that out and then make the 90 in red, but since we can't do a cross out, we'll do uh, now, or how about this? $90 this week only. And we'll go ahead and bold that and uh, let's make it red too, see how that looks. And then we'll make the title italicized. That looks pretty good. Okay, and then I'm gonna look here through the styles real quick. Okay, I was hoping that um, there's a way for me to, uh, to shrink this image down too, but you know what, in the email, it's gonna look great. It looks big right now, but, um, but that'll look just fine. Okay, so how about for this email, we'll do three pictures of paintings. Um, you know, if you're announcing like something like this, you might, uh, I don't know, maybe you wanna do like five pictures, maybe you wanna do 10 pictures. There's no right or wrong way, but, um, but I'll do three for this just so the, uh, it doesn't take me too long to, to put this email together since I have so much stuff to teach you guys today. 
All right, so I've duplicated this two more times. So that's what I was doing there. I hit that duplicate button. And so now I've got three. So now I'm just gonna change the picture and change the text. And that'll save me a little time. So we're gonna replace, you guys know this by now. Let's do my psychedelic garlic painting. <laughs> if you know anything about me, you know I paint a lot of fruit. Lately I've been painting crazy looking fruit. I don't know what that's about. Been looking at too much Van Gogh lately. All right, so we'll call this psychedelic garlic. <laughs> oh, and by the way, for the pricing, um, <laughs> these paintings aren't ninety dollars. Uh, my pricing is um, probably oh geez for a twelve by twelve. Right now, I probably charge like two hundred dollars for it. Um, you know, maybe that's even a little bit low. Uh, but everyone has their own price. Um, everyone has their own kind of plan for how they do their pricing. The reason why I put 90 is because I knew I could take 10% off that in my head. <laughs> so I'm assuming that these are 100 and 10% off that is 90. That's why I chose 90 for that. Not because I think you should sell a 12 by 12 painting for $90. I just don't trust my math on the fly. <laughs> so let's see, we'll choose one more. And uh, what's one that I really liked lately? Let's see, I'll do this uh, super strawberry painting. Upload this guy. Super strawberries. We'll make it smaller. Wait for that to go through. Okay, so it's smaller now. And we'll call this Super Strawberry. All right, so now to backtrack, you'll see, save 10% of my artworks. Here's a general picture. You know, I'm gonna make this full size actually. It's gonna look smaller when you look at it in email format. Got my selling proposition, how they can get in touch. And then I've got three paintings here with their discounted price, their name, all that business. Okay, and then um, let's look at a couple other things that we could click and drag in here. So there's this thing called divider, and I like using these for my emails just to kind of organize things. It's really simple. It's just like a little gray line. It's, it's almost even difficult to see. But um, I think these dividers kind of organize your email nicely. So I use those a lot. Sorry if I'm making you dizzy by scrolling up and down like this. Okay, and then how about, let's see, the only other thing I'm going to do here is a footer. So we'll drag that here. And you'll see that um, the footer actually, like, I don't know, it looks weird. What you're seeing here is a bunch of automated stuff. So this footer is automatically going to fill in these emails with things like copyright 2020, Kyle, Heath, Art, that kind of stuff. So that's what's going on there. Um, and so we'll count this a finished email. We'll save and close. Click continue. And this brings us to a page that looks like this. You'll see if you look over here in the content section, we've got the, uh, the email that we just created. Um, and then up above here, we've got some things that we can fill out. So let me walk you through filling these things out now. First off, it says untitled here. This is a, uh, a placeholder name for your email that's, that's for you. Nobody else is going to see this but you, but this helps you to uh, to see what was this email about again? Oh yeah, okay. So we'll call this 10% uh, off email and we'll say uh, August 2020. So this is for you. This is for you to remember like what is this email about? So when you look back at 
how the email did or say you want to do another 10% off email and you want to duplicate this one so you don't start from scratch that's what this is for next we've got our two section so here um, we can start adding contacts to our email list you'll see here we've got this add recipients button um, and right here it says import contacts we don't have import contacts right now we're starting from scratch so what we're actually gonna have to do now is pause and come back to this email later so I guess I should have started with building an audience but that's okay so I'll click finish later um, and you're not gonna lose this so if you click audience instead or something don't worry you're not gonna lose this email that you just made MailChimp will save it I'll choose finish later and now what we want to do is want to go into the audience section up here I'll go to audience dashboard that's the uh, the main page and then here I'm gonna choose view contacts all right so right now <laughs> we have one member in our mailing list and that's uh, yourself <laughs> it's a good thing to have yourself on your email list because then uh, so it's just a way to look at like the emails that you're sending see how they look from uh, from recipient all that so yeah good thing to have here and now what we want to do is um, we want to add contacts here we go all right so I'm looking at my audience list I'm choosing add contacts and then I'm gonna add a subscriber so this is the manual area where you can manually add someone to your list now it's important to note here that for your email list only add people who've specifically opted in to receive emails from you so um, th that's a really important thing it's it's against the law actually to send emails to people who have not opted in so um, check first but um, so what we'll do here is we'll add a manual subscriber and uh, so for here I'll do um, reach me at kyleheath.com that's my email address um, but you could you could assume this is uh, your mom or your your aunt Gertrude you know someone who you know like you know wants to be a part of the list put in the first name and last name that's actually a really good thing to do if you know their first and last name I would suggest that you put it in an address phone number we don't need to worry about any of that tags tags are actually pretty pretty interesting but um that's something I'll save for a, uh, a future email and then we've got a checkbox here that says this person gave me permission to email them so we're going to choose that they did give you permission and then we'll choose subscribe what that means is they're subscribing to your list so now if I go to my audience dashboard go to view contacts I've got an email list with two recipients look at that and you know what like don't feel bad if it's it's okay for you to set this up if there's only 10 people that you can email to right now um, your audience list can grow and uh, I'm gonna have future emails on specifically and easily how to to grow your list so hang on tight for that I'm good at building email lists um, and I'm gonna tell you everything I know in a in a future video so we've got an audience now what that means is now we can go back to campaigns campaigns is the word they use for like the uh, the email you're sending out it's your email campaign so choose campaigns all campaigns we see here we've got this 10% off email August 2020 that's the email we're working on I clicked edit and now you'll see we've automatically have a two that is automatically put in here it's all subscribed contacts in the audience Kyle test art so basically what that means is when you make an email by default all your people are gonna get it in an advanced email I'll show you how to send to subsets of those people 
why you may want to do that, that'll be the same video where I talk about tags, because tags is uh, the way you do that. But this is perfect. We're going to send everybody. And now we need to decide who is this going from. Obviously, it's coming from me. But um, this is how you can kind of choose how to present yourself. Um, so I may put uh, Kyle the Artist or Kyle Heath Art, something like that. Um, and they'll see this as their recipient when they open up their Gmail account. So just to kind of show you, let's go back to my Gmail account. If I go to my inbox, for example, here, I got an email from Emily Jeffords. Um, she's fantastic, great artist, check her out. Um, but so she chose the from as first name, last name, Emily Jeffords. That's this area here, Kyle Heath Art. And then whatever email address you want it to look like it's coming from. Make sure it's yours. Choose save. Okay, and then the only other thing we need to do here is add the subject to our email. You want your subject to be catchy. You want it to be um, not deceptive. So it, you want it to be what's gonna be in the email and you don't want it to be too long. So for my subject, we're keeping the same principles in mind that we make it about them. So we'll say save. 10% on beautiful art. And then preview text, this is kind of like a subtitle. We can say, um, beautiful, affordable art. How about this? Let's say, uh, For next week, save on beautiful, affordable art. There we go. I like that. So that's our subject and our preview text. These are things that you can kind of, uh, I don't know, test over time too. You can try different ways of presenting your email and see, uh, do people seem to click more often if I use a subject kind of like this? Do they click less often if I do it another way? And uh, you know, you're always kind of tweaking and improving your presentation with these things. And then um, you'll see here below this uh, kind of preview, there's a link that says send a test email. Let's do that because we want to give one more look over to our email before we send it out to our entire list. So we'll send it to, uh, that's my email address, the one I put in for this account and all that. Click send test. All right, and it sent a test email. So this is gonna let me know what the email is going to look like. I think this might have ended up in spam too. So let's test. Or it might just be sending a little slowly. Do, do, do. Let's see. Let me, uh, I'll send another test to another email just to make sure I didn't type my email address in wrong or something. So you can send as many of these as you want to. Let's see, so looking at here, here we go. All right, so Kyle Heath Art. And here we go, this is the test version. So this is what your email is gonna look like when it goes out to people. So there we go. This is a great opportunity to do a look over one more time to make sure you didn't have any typos, um, to make sure that you're presenting it the way you wanna present it it's always good to give a second glance to your emails just to make sure that you didn't muck it up. And you'll see how this automatically filled in the footer, like I said. Copyright 2020, Kyle Testart, 
that just all goes in automatically when you drag in your footer. So I like this. I'm happy with this email. So we're going to go ahead and send it off. So here's our email page. I sent a test. I liked it. So now let's do send. There's more advanced stuff you can do, scheduling, but I'll save that for the advanced uh, lesson as well. It's going to give you one more chance to think about it. <laughs> I like it. So we'll do send now. And boom, there you go. The email sent out to people. Um, so I checked the, uh, the test email on, on my desktop, but, um, but you can also check this on your phone. Um, that's a nice way to just, you know, see how it looks on both. By default, MailChimp looks really nice. So I, I don't anticipate there, there being any kind of, um, kind of issue with how it looks. But, um, but if you want to see how it looks on mobile as well, um, if you're like me, I, I read a lot of my emails on my phone now rather than my desktop. Um, so yeah, that's, that's something to keep in mind. So that let, let me just backtrack with everything we did here. Um, I'll get out of this basketball screen. <laughs> so in this video, we, um, we talked about why it's important to have an email list. Um, I showed you MailChimp and, um, and how to uh, create your MailChimp account there. I showed you how to um, navigate the MailChimp interface, how to create your first email. Um, we talked a little bit about email principles and kind of guidelines for, um, for how to present yourself in an email. And we went through how to um, create your contacts list. So I feel like that's a good amount of information for this video actually to go through. Um, in a future video, I'm going to go into all the steps for how to grow your email list. So I want to hold off on technical stuff related to that for another video, just so that I don't overwhelm you with information, but so that you're not sitting here with your new mailing list wondering, <laughs> you know, now what do I do? Um, let me talk a little bit about some simple ways to add people to your list. Um, one of the things you can do to start adding subscribers is you can send a normal email out like through, you know, your Gmail, your personal Gmail account. Um, put together a list of your friends and family who may be interested in following your, your art career. Just put together a simple email that says, Hey, um, I've started an email list so people can keep track with my art. Um, if you'd like me to add you to the list, please, uh, please reply and let me know. That'll give you a, uh, a quick boost to your email list so that you can start getting people on there. Um, and that's, a, you know, a little bit of a low tech way. You're going to have to manually type in those emails in the way that I described, but, uh, but that's okay. Um, Presumably, you're not going to get, you know, a thousand people uh, from that email. Another thing you can do is you can reach out to your followers on social media. So Facebook and Instagram, um, you can create posts that announce, hey, I've created an email list. Um, if you'd like to keep track of, uh, of my art, um, please, uh, please send me a direct message with your email address and, uh, and I'll add you to the list. That's a really simple way to, uh, to get people to sign up to your list. And that'll get the ball rolling. You know, we all, we all start somewhere. And, um, and those, those contacts that you've already created are, uh, are a really great way to, to add people. I'll go into um, the details and how to, to really jumpstart adding people in, a, in the future video. But, um, but that's, that would be your next step. Now that you have this mailing list, reach out to your friends and family and um, reach out to the people who already follow you on social media. And Facebook and Instagram are, are both really great ways to, to reach out there. Um, 
yeah, thank you guys for following me on this. Um, I tried to take this slowly, but I know this is a lot of stuff, so feel free to, to rewind if you need to see me explain a certain step multiple times. Um, but I think creating an emailing list is a really nice thing to have. Um, so when you feel comfortable doing it, I, I encourage you to refer to this video, follow along with my steps, and um, you know, it's really not too bad. I, I know technical stuff is kind of scary, but, uh, but I think you'll be able to follow these steps and, um, and get a ma great mailing list going. Again, I really appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for um, for being a part of my Patreon. I, uh, I'm so thankful for, for your involvement in my art career, and I'm so thankful to be connected to you. I hope that you're doing great this year. As of recording, this is 2020, so, you know, we're still in the midst of COVID craziness and political stuff, and it's just a, it's a crazy year. But I hope you're still able to create art I hope you and your loved ones are happy and safe. And, um, you know, I, I just, I love you and appreciate you. Have a great month and uh, take care, everyone. Happy art making.